Hello, Bob Hughes here with JD Squared. In this video, I'd like to give you an overview of how SheetCam handles tool sets when it comes to plasma cutting. If we look over here on the left side, you see the tools box. There are some tools listed, the Sharpie, the Scriber, laser pointer, and some plasma, different, different voltages and all. When you create your parts over here, you're going to also create operations and you're going to assign to those operations tools. Now we're only talking about tools here, so let's get right down to how does um, you know SheetCam know what tools. Now SheetCam tools are really the consumables that you are putting onto your plasma torch. And you'll know, for instance, let's just take a Hypertherm Power Max 85. You've got fine cut consumables, 45, 65, 85 amp consumables. It also matters, are we cutting mild steel, stainless steel, aluminum, etc. So what would happen is if you were going to cut out some your material let's just say 16 gauge steel for instance you may want to use the fine cut consumables so when you load your part over here those operations are going to use them now what you need to do is you need to tell sheet cam what consumables i have in my torch because it's going to know the work the kit the um kerf setting the power the voltage you know the feed rates everything so what happens is if you want to change tool sets in sheet cam you go to file open tool set now, we're going to back up one here. This is the documents folder on your PC. Now, obviously, it's the same on the MAD because we're running Windows on that also. If you remember earlier in an earlier video, we had, I had mentioned that we had three folders, and one of them was called MAD Tools, and that is where your tools were stored. So if we look here, we've created tool sets for the different kinds of consumables. So, for instance, if I just click right here, this tells you that this tool set is a PowerMax 45 amp shielded consumables and it's got the speed and feeds and everything for um, stainless steel and it's in inches you know if we go down for instance if we're looking say we have 85 amp consumables in the machine and we're cutting mild steel the tool set would be a PowerMax 85 85 amp shielded consumables. Um, we don't want to use unshielded. I explained that in another video. You, you pretty much don't want to do that. So we're going to go 85 amp shielded mild steel inch. Click that, say OK. And you've noticed over here it's loaded the new tools. This little box right here, what's happened is if we had already loaded a part and created operations that actually generated cut lines, this little box is going to say, hey, do you want me to update these new you know, cut lines. We have none, so we're just going to dismiss this box. Now, over here, you've got the new tools. If we open up the table in Sheet Cam, you can see all the tools that are created right here for uh, that are in that tool set. Here's quality ones, quality fives, different thicknesses, you know, and so on. Now, Changing these things and getting it to work in the MAD and back here becomes, or, or staying up to date, I'm sorry, or in sync, it, it becomes a little bit of a logistics nightmare. So what we did, starting at version 2 on the MAD Plasma interface, we've added the ability to where you could change all these factors at the machine for the particular parts you're cutting. You could override the, the torch height, voltage, the, the feed. You know, you could override just about everything. Now, once you override it on the machine, let's say you make some tweaks and you've got it cutting pretty darn fine and you want to go ahead and update the tables on the machine. If you click the button down there that says update table, you will update the tables on the MAD machine. Now those tables can then be loaded into Sheet Cam. Now we've got a little bit of an issue here. I'm running Sheet Cam on my desktop. The MAD machine has got its own set of MAD tools and I also have my own set of MAD tools here on my desktop. Now what you could do is go to the MAD, put a USB stick in it, go to Documents, MAD Tools, and either copy the whole folder, all of the files, or just the one that you were modifying, put it on the USB stick, take it into your desktop, um, and basically install it into this, you know, copy over these files. Now, another thing is, too, you can make your own table names and all if you didn't want to overwrite these files. These files essentially contain recommended values coming from Hypertherm. So you can do whatever you want. Now, 
that works all fine and dandy. You're you're in sync, but you've had to actually physically move the tables from one, you know, from the mad in here. There is another easier way to do it. If your MAD machine is on a network, you've got it either wireless or wired hooked into your network, and your desktop is on the same network, well, you could then share the folder, for instance, in on your MAD machine. So you would go to the MAD machine, for instance, open up the MAD tools, because it's going to look just like this on it, because they're both front of Windows. So you'd go to this PC, double click on Documents, and right here on MAD Tools, right click on it and say save, share with specific people. Now, right here, I've already done it here earlier. I will remove that so I can show you again. But anyway, up here in the name deal, you could type everyone. And that's just a code to Windows that says, hey, share it with everybody. If we add it, it's saying you have read-only permission. Well, we need to give it read-write permission, and then we click share. And it says we're done. At this point, on our MAD machine, the um, that directory is shared. If we come in here, in this area here, if we go back to um, the, let's see, go to Options, Application Options, and you're going to go to Default Directories, you can see right here, Tools are set to the Documents MAD Tools on this computer. Now, if I hit click here, you know, the little three dollar button, I could go to the library, I mean the network, I'm sorry, and it might take a second, and then I could find my MAD machine in this group, click on it, find that directory, and say, hey, use that directory. And at that point in time, every time you updated the table at your burning machine, whenever you started your sheet cam on your desktop, it would be referring to the tool tables on the MAD. Now, the only possible hang up with that right there is that you have to have the MAD machine on while you're working on your desktop. So taking the pros and cons of both, you know, approaches, you, you'll be able to figure out uh, how that you want to do that. Okay, so in this, this video here, we've told you about tables, how to load, I mean, tools, how to load, it, you know, see the tables and all. We're not going to be talking about operations in this one because tools alone we felt deserved its own video because of the of the length and the things that had to be explained. The next video we're going to be talking about loading apart, creating your operation, and then assigning these tools to that operation. So we hope you keep tuned in and happy cutting. Talk to you later.